This is the first video looking at the Litton Agency database for Unit 2. Let's have a look at the task scenario. You've been asked to create a database for Mason and Thompson Letting Agency. The agency manages the renting of properties in various towns around the country. The database will record information about the properties, tenants who rent properties and property rentals. Properties are categorised by their type. For example, a property can be a detached house. Properties have at least one bedroom and a maximum of five and rent is charged per calendar month. So if we just have a quick look at this task scenario, it gives us some indications as to the entities which will become the tables in our database. We've got a thing called property or properties. We've got tenants, notice the plural, who rent properties. All right, again, notice the plural because that probably indicates that there's a many-to-many -many relationship between tenant and properties and a thing called a property rental. We've got some further information. A property can have a type, so that will probably be a field right, in the property table or in the property entity. And properties must have at least one bedroom and a maximum of five. So that indicates to me there's going to be some range validation on the number of bedrooms. And then rent is charged per calendar month. So possibly we've got some calculations coming up to do with rent. And that's why we're told it's charged per calendar month. Let's have a look at the sample data. And if we just go along these column headings, we've got property ID, rental ID, We've got a tenant ID and a property type ID. And with them having an ID in the name, I suggest they're going to be primary keys. But let's have a look at the data itself. And let's just have a look at the tenant first. So we've got tenants T1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. And if we just look at tenant 1, they've got one rental rental number one and tenant number TE1 again has got rental number three. So that suggests that a tenant can have a number of rentals. Let's have a look now at the properties. We've got property ID, probably going to be the primary key for property. And we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Property number one has had two rentals. Rental number four and rental number five. So a property can have a number of rentals. Let's have a look at this property ID. We've got one, two, three, four, five and six. If we just look at four here, here, four represents detached bungalow. One represents detached house. So that property type ID will be the primary key for the property type. Just come back to this property ID. If we look at property number one, that identifies the house number, the property postcode and the number of bedrooms. If we look at the rental ID, a rental, let's have a look at number one. We've got a rental start date just coming across, got a monthly rent. And if we look to see at house 5A, which has had two rentals, we've got a differing monthly rental amount. So therefore that monthly rent is identified by that rental ID. We've also got a rental end date and just note some have not got an end date. So they're obviously currently being rented. And let's have a look at the tenant ID. We've got a tenant surname. We just look at TE1. It identifies Roberts, just the tenant surname. So question. Can you identify any primary keys that might uniquely identify potential entities? Well, we've got property ID, property type ID, rental ID and tenant ID. And that suggests to us that there are four entities, property, property type, rental and tenant. One or two more questions now. Can we describe any potential relationships about this data. So can a tenant rent more than one rental? The answer was yes, we had a tenant that got two rentals. 
can a rental be for more than one tenant? The answer there was no, a rental is only for one tenant. You can't get a number of tenants on the same rental. Can a property have many rentals? The answer to that was yes. And can a rental be for more than one property? The answer for that was no. Can a property have more than one property type? No, it's either detached bungalow or detached house. Can a property type be used on more than one property? Yes. Let's just go back and have a look. Let's have a look at a property type ID 1. It's used on property 4 and it's used on property 3. So the answer to that is yes. We also need to consider if there's any many-to-many -many relationships to be resolved when we're designing a database. Now, in this case, there isn't one to be resolved. There is a many-to-many -many relationship between tenant and property, but that's we've dealt with with the rental. And because we've been given a rental ID, we've actually got the primary key for a joining table uh, and some details that are going to go into that joining table. There are one-to-many relationships, of course, between property type and property, property and rental, and tenant and rental. We've got an initial ERD here, and we've got our four entities. We've got property type, property, rental, and tenant, and we've got the relationships on here. So we said a property type can be used many times on a property, but a property has only got one property type. A property can have many rentals, but a rental is for only one property. A tenant can have many rentals, but a rental is for only one tenant. The next thing we need to do is add the primary keys. And this is quite straightforward. Pro property type ID is the primary key for property type. Property ID is the primary key for property. Rental ID is the primary key for rental. And tenant ID is the primary key for tenant. The next thing we would normally do is resolve any many-to-many -many relationships, but there are none in this database. We then add the foreign keys to the ERD and go through the same steps that we've done before if you watched any any other of my videos. So we've got a many side of a relationship. We need to go back to the one side, get the primary key, in this case property type ID, and put that in on the many side as a foreign key. So property type ID asterisk is the foreign key. So again, where we've got a many side here on the rental, we go back to the one side, get the primary key, property ID, and we put that in as a foreign key on the many side. So there we've got property ID, asterisk. And then finally, we've still, we've got another many side on this rental entity. Go back to the one side, get the primary key, tenant ID, and put that in as a foreign key on the many side and there we have tenant ID asterisk. The final stage of the design is to add the attributes and so it's a case of going through all those column headings, those attributes and deciding which entity they belong to. So property type as in detached house bungalow belongs with property type ID. In terms of the property, each property has a house number, a number of bedrooms, and a postcode. And then if we just come across the tenant, all we had for the tenant was the tenant's surname. And then the rental, other than those foreign keys, each rental had a start date, an end date, and a monthly rent. So that completes the design. You can just sketch these out. You don't have to do them neatly. Uh, if you're actually doing an exam, you can literally just sketch it out on a piece of paper. You don't have to hand any evidence of your design in for the exam. So next video, we'll look at creating the table structures.